And they should not use reaction shots of this actress. No. They keep doing that. <laughs> she doesn't know what the fuck. She's clearly like, wee, bird flying. Or like, <laughs> sand is sandy. Like, that's you can see what's going through her head. It has nothing to do with it what's happening on screen. Cuts of her at the craft services table. Hi, we make a movie. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> So okay, I get so, to have as much as I want. They say there's no limit. You can just take it. <laughs> it's free. God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema just as soon as we get done with this unrelated trilogy that Eli wanted to do. I'm your host, Noah Illusions, and sitting to my immediate left is my good friend, Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back. Thanks, Noah. Uh, you know who believes in science? Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton <laughs> believes in science. God damn it. All right. Well, just in case I wasn't depressed for the episode, I appreciate that. And sitting 81 miles to my right is my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? This movie had just as much Christianity as the Kirk Cameron baseball movie. Thank you very much. Thank you <laughs> very much. If you insist. So tell us, Heath, what will we be breaking down today? We watched The Prophecy 3. That is all I can tell you. I <laughs> watched it twice, and I have no idea. Holy We're shit! We're all gonna go through it together and figure oh, it out right now. Like I don't know that we. I, I don't want to sell. We're gonna that try we're gonna figure it to out. Figure it out together right now. <laughs> Speed, speed through your commute. If we're a commute show for you, I need you to pedal to the metal. That old lady, she didn't need to cross the street anyways. Be the, be the hand of God for her. This, we're talking 20, 30 minutes most, and I'm going to be Carl the Peggy Peggycorn for 19 of those minutes. So. All right, I feel like you've already sort of hinted at the answer, but Eli, how bad was this movie? Well... If you shot two prophecy movies, but you'd really like to release a third one with B footage from all the same locations of the first two and no plot, you are the Weinstein brothers. Apparently. <laughs> wow. Okay, so look, the, the first movie was actually a pretty decent flick with more aspirations than budget, in my opinion. False. The second one was a crappy cash grab. The True. third one was god awful we earned this third movie oh, we earned holy it. shit yeah this one belongs here no question from anyone on the panel this movie belongs under the heading of god awful and just to underscore how poorly thought out this movie was i challenge either of you to tell me what the plot of it was uh ghost <laughs> yeah, yeah. we go with eli definitely toast or maybe cafe fe i don't know <laughs> so, okay so uh Last movie in a trilogy, normally we rank it compared to the first two, and we're going to do that again, but I have to warn you, it was pretty tough to come up with categories where this one like could theoretically compete, but I'm going to start off with a genuine one. Where does this one rank, in your opinion, in terms of angel fights? Oh, uh, I'm going to say last in fights themselves, but definitely first in dismounts and landings from fights <laughs> and fight oh, yeah. moves. Someone was a cousin of a gymnast. They yeah, finally yeah. got... Wasn't me and Heath rolling out of bed in the morning for the first time? <laughs> Did you poop on your way out? Well, it's hard. The bed's... I the am floor. elegant when I do that, though. <laughs> <laughs> and where'd you rank it, Eli? I'm going to go with better weapons for sure, but worse mm. shoving. Worse yeah. shoving. Yeah. <laughs> all right. All right. No, that's fair. Um, okay. So where does it rank in terms of flashbacks? Uh, Best, best. Mm. So many dead boobs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Agree. First place. There's a large pile of fuck zombies in this movie. There is. Yeah, there we'll is. There. Repeatedly. All right. Where would you rank it in terms of angel names? Um, pass. Don't remember the names. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to go with worst. No yeah. question in this movie. They just went through the alphabet in the writer's room and they were like, all right. So there's Dan Ayal and Eli Ayal and Mai Ayal and <laughs> Pi Ayal. And, yeah. and they forgot about the letter N. It happens to the best. Yeah. <laughs> Dan, also, oh, always oh. avoid and, the letter N. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And finally, where would you rank it in terms of 
angels can't drive gags. Oh, first place. It's really <laughs> explaining a joke is what makes you know how when your dad describes <laughs> Dave Barry to you is when you really get it. When yeah. you get the comic <laughs> genius that is Dave Barry. That's this movie. I like Dave Barry. <laughs> Fuck you. I'm, a, I'm gonna agree I with used you to get again. Dave Barry columns in a quarter clucker. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Why do supermarkets have such long lines? There are so many rows, so many lanes. <laughs> Dave Barry, you satire all of us. You hold up a mirror to society. <laughs> I don't know why I went so hard on Dave Barry. I like Dave Barry too. Perfectly Pick that, Dave guy. Barry. It's about time. Dance back, Dave Barry. Dance back. <laughs> All right. Well, um, in terms of angels can't drive gags, getting back to that, I am going to also agree with Eli. Uh, non-sarcastic first place because the half angel can ride a motorcycle. In this. That's just that's just great writing. That's great writing. They get they tie it together. It's just two wheels. The half angel can do it. We'll get there. It it really oh, works. Holy shit. Boy, you can just tell we're trying to drag out this intro because there's no movie here, right? <laughs> no All movie. Right, now, is, is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Uh, yeah, I'm going to say best worst. Uh, did I mention there's a pile of fuck zombies? It's, <laughs> that's a thing in this movie. It's the best best. We're going to get there. Yeah, and <laughs> we're going to come back to it several times. I'm going to go with best worst door kick in. <laughs> there is a door kicking in this movie that is genuinely, I cried with laughter. I, I stopped this you. movie to weep with, eh, eh. It's, it's like you could see that the PA pull the door open faster than his kick. And he, yeah, it's the best with no Foley. So just like, it's the yeah, fucking best. Right, right. So have you ever seen like a really <laughs> fucked up, like a, like a, like a, a singer who's on heroin and he goes for the microphone stand kick over, but it doesn't quite work. It's that, <laughs> but with a door. Holy shit. I was going to just give it best, worst, final battle. All right, look, I have watched movies that end in David A.R. White fights. Multiple and I'm gonna give, movies. Yeah. <laughs> many, right, movies. many of those. Yeah. And I'm still going to give this the best, worst, final battle. This, first of all, it made no sense. The stakes were everything and nothing. And it was it as was boring as it could possibly be, yet the entire movie hinged on it. And as I'll reveal at the end, it could have been fucking amazing with a very, very slight rewrite. You guys are going to agree with me by the time this is all over. Really? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Very slight rewrite. And one that it's, you, you oh, Jesus. Oh, yeah, I'm so and, just hinged. Are we going to say anything hinged <laughs> on, in this movie? Were there any hinges? <laughs> I feel like that's that not... door that that the door that the <laughs> has some pretty tough hinges. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Get ready to hear that noise a lot in this movie, I think. All right. Well, my Pure Flix account's getting dusty, and I can't get back to those movies until we're done with this trilogy. So we're going to keep the break brief, and when we come back, we'll dive into all the consecutive scenes that are The Prophecy 3 The Ascent. Mini episode. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, welcome to the weirdly snobby shaving store at the mall. I'm busy even though nobody is in here but you. Hi, yeah, just looking to buy a razor. I was thinking of going to Dollar Shave Club. But, you know, I'm, I'm here waiting for them to throw out the old Cinnabons. I figure I should stop in and see, you know, check out what you got. Mm, I'm sorry, you said Cinnabon and I blacked out from sorrow. What's Dollar Shave Club? Oh, it's a razor delivery service. You sign up and they send you super great razors, like a fraction of the price of normal ones. Mm, but perhaps uh, means big bag of razors available at the local grocery store next to the Lucky Charms one sustains themselves and their children on. No, no, no. It's it's the Executive Razor. New members get their first month of the Executive Razor with a tube of their Dr. Carver's Shave Butter for only $5 with free shipping. In your first month box, you get an awesome weighty handle, a full cassette of four cartridges, and a tube of their Shave Butter. After your first month, replacement cartridges ship automatically at their regular price. Mm, that sounds wonderful, but let's not speak of this dollar shave cup again, sir. Perhaps I can interest you in one of these. Ow! Ow! How did, how did I get cut? I didn't even touch it. Yes, sir. That's a straight razor. It will do that. It's just so much blood. Right? I Crazy. 
Perhaps Sir would be interested in something a bit easier to handle. Yeah, maybe like convenient delivery to my door for just a few bucks a month with no commitments, um, no hidden fees, cancel any time you like, that kind of uh, easy stuff? Uh, no, sir. I mean, this. What's that? This, sir, is the Mark Scorpion XJ77. 432 blades, 90 batteries, and 76 different settings. Do, um, do I need that stuff? No, no, not at all. It's actually quite a bit like trying to shave with a marital implement covered in knives. I see. Well, you can only get the Dollar Shave Club offer exclusively at dollarshaveclub.com slash godawful. That's dollarshaveclub.com slash godawful. And uh, I think I'm going to go with that. You're kind of scary. Uh, but we have shave butter, too. You do? Yeah, it's, it's made of lamb. Gross. Oh, sorry, buy a lamb. His name's Wallace. He's not very good. It's got hoofs. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get a Cinnabon. Dollarshaveclub.com. The smarter choice. Oh, Wallace, I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, it's not your fault. Honestly. Why do we sell these in a mall? Like, oh, mall customers, they'll love fancy razors. You got 500 bucks to spare? You're here in a mall. <laughs> Hey. No, no, just hey, 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 hey. don't do this, D dude. I don't care. Just fill my mouth with my mother's feces. Just, no, I'm not. Hey, whatever hey. it is. Come on, don't. No, be this way. no. You know, I actually ran into Vigo Mortensen on the street, and I asked him what angel he wanted me to kill. I looked like an asshole. Look, that is not on me. Come on, man. Hear me out, or I'll uh, chain you to a wall, and you'll spend a millennia wondering what's slithering through your guts. Oh, uh, wow. You you have a way with words. Thank you. Okay. Uh, what do you want? Okay, hear me out. I need you to help Gabriel this time, who still looks like Christopher Walken, but he's a human now. <laughs> Wait, so now there's two humans who look and act like Christopher Walken? Uh, don't, don't get me started, yes. Sorry, okay, uh, just go ahead. All right, so I need you to help him kill Heaven's spy so that the new god Prius... Won't start heaven <laughs> I'm, opening again. I'm sorry. New God Prius? So I, man, I know. I don't make up the names. It's just that's what he's Oh, called. It's, the, it's the demon Tesla. Watch out. You're a jerk. If you are. <laughs> Was Vigo Morkinson nice? <laughs> Not after I asked him that. <laughs> so stupid. I can't wait to meet him. <laughs> And we're back for the breakdown, and we're going to start this one off with a little Molotov cocktail action. That's right, motherfuckers. <laughs> Burn actually, down the suburbs. I was actually confused by the very start. They're lighting a Molotov cocktail, yeah, but at, for a second, it looks like a s'mores. It looks like he's lighting a marshmallow. I was like, yeah, hey, s'more. No, okay. Yep. <laughs> pretty pretty, pretty sure that's just you, Heath. Pretty sure that's just you. <laughs> okay, you guys weren't like, yay, s'mores. That, no, 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 whatever. Yeah. And, and also, okay, and you got to get used to this. This doesn't happen <laughs> a lot through the movie, but it happens a lot in Act 1. We get some, like... 90s rap video editing where you know you're looking at the Molotov cocktail, but from the north and the south and the north and the north and the east and the south and the north and the west. So there's yeah. going to be a little bit of that. And then he tosses it into a Norman Rockwell painting of a home. Yeah. And I said this already, but like if you told me this movie was just made of like B footage from the first two movies and a plot line from the second one that just didn't quite work out. I'd be like, yeah, I get it. <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's what this movie is. Also, there's this weird moment. It's going to try to be explained later in the movie, but it doesn't make any sense. They throw a Molotov cocktail in the house and the mom and son from the second movie, they're like, oh, Molotov cocktail. What? What's the first thing you're supposed to do? Lie on the floor? Lie on the floor and hold still in a fire, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, no, it, because the fire's vision is based on movement. <laughs> yeah. So, but then we see mom just laid there and calmly died of fire. That's like, that's the shot we get. And that's what they explain later. Yeah. 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 No, and, and they make no effort to explain why she wouldn't have like gone out of the house or there was a door that led out of the house in that room. Yeah, well, how fast does a Molotov cocktail engulf an entire house in flames? Well, three to five seconds. Yeah, Is it three well, to five? But here's yeah. the thing, though. Okay, was that just, you know, like, 
rap video remix editing or did they actually throw 23 Maltov cocktails through the exact same part of the window, right? <laughs> we don't know. So it's just the goat sailing them through over and over again. <laughs> <laughs> Gentleman who was good at basketball and then died of heroin. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> the greatest of all time. Yeah, yeah. the uh, so the the living room's on fire. Uh, mom covers up the little kid because mom is made of asbestos, so he'll be fine. And then we get okay. So now we're gonna get the voiceover, like the movie's gonna start proper. Um, and we start off on someone like giving a sermon. And at first, they're just reading from the beginning of the Bible. And I'm like, oh, they're just reading the Bible, aren't they? But then they have to stop because it's impossible to read more than 18 consecutive words out of the Bible before it starts sounding like the dystopian bloodbath that it really is. So they have to start improvising and making shit up by that. Right. God's word was the episode of Cosmos. Episode of Cosmos. <laughs> Don't steal the stars from us. Yeah, right. Well, you have this like Hubble image or something like that yeah. up at the beginning of this of a nebula, and they're like, eh? "Huh? That looks like God, right? Doesn't that look <laughs> like a God thing? <laughs> More than a science thing?" <laughs> yeah. So, okay. So we're it, the the sermon we're hearing is from this kid at this bum church. Um, but before we can get there, we have to have Christopher Walken pull up. He learned to drive, sort of. It's not. Really, he's just lurching all over the place trying to park. Perpendicular park. He's trying to just like pull into a spot forward. He looked fine to me. <laughs> Looked look totally fine for me. He and just throws it in first and then reverse. It made no sense. Also, they finally gave him a normal haircut. Oh, okay, good. Because I wrote, are we just going to pretend that's not Noah in this movie? Okay, we're going to pretend that's not Noah. <laughs> it looks like vegetarian meatloaf. <laughs> The musician. In every yes, yes. sense you could take that right, word. Right. And, and just, yeah, all the other senses, too. <laughs> yeah, but they, he's sporting this long mop of hair in, in this movie that, yeah, looks depressingly like mine. I'm like, oh, man, your hair isn't very lustrous, and it just kind of flops down there like you don't give a fuck and stopped worrying about it nine years. But uh, that got depressing, <laughs> so I, 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 I moved on. So, okay, so he wanders into homeless church. And this is the Church of the Atheist Straw Man, right? That's what this yeah. church is. It's literally just him being like, oh, God's real, but we're mad at him. Yeah, we're mad at him, bad at him, bad God, naughty God. <laughs> yeah, oh, and, and like as if this wasn't like obvious enough from the words that are coming out of his mouth, they actually have one, because all the people in the, in the crowd are going, yeah, I agree, you are correct, sir. And then one guy yells, God is dead, and the fucking jukebox needle scratches, and everyone <laughs> shuts up and looks at him and like, God, dude, come on, Nietzsche, fuck off. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, where is Atheist Church? Dude, next building over. We've been over. Sorry. <laughs> this is, sorry. Put the donut this is back. Angry this is Angry Agnostic for, Church. <laughs> this is Angry Church. Put the donut back. This is for Angry Church donut. <laughs> People's Front of Agnosticism, man. Get it right. Yeah, so, okay, so Christopher Walken comes in to watch this kid preach about how God's ignoring them, and then a blind guy shoots the preacher kid. 13 times. Yeah, quite a bit. Yeah. It is the turkey movie. Remember the blood lust birth movie with the turkey? Blood freak. Blood freak. Remember, yeah. blood, it is blood freak level repetitive. It's just like, <laughs> pa, pa, pa. I wanted the scream from blood freak. Just, ah, 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 every time he got shot. <laughs> Wait, was that Thanksgiving? I think there was, thank there was two different turkey movies. Yeah, I, yeah. I meant blood freak. Yeah, that's the one with the silly, like the scream that he's talking about. Yeah. Okay, so but just to be on the safe side, you know, because the guy's blind, he, he shot him 13 times, but he doesn't know if those bullets hit anything. So he also <laughs> pulls out his gigantic fucking knife to go stab him to death, too. Yeah. So I guess he's just going to smell his way to the blood. He's part angel. He's one eighteenth angel. So oh, he might I see. be able to. <laughs> and also part shark. Yeah. Right. Um, and of course, Walken is hanging out this whole time, just kind of watching. The chick. Now we meet Maggie for just a second in this scene. We'll get to Maggie and we'll spend some time on Maggie. Oh, but we just meet her briefly in this scene as Walken watches her watch the preacher kid die and be very sad about that. Now, unfortunately, the blind guy loses his knife. It gets knocked out of his hand because he's blind and there's a lot of people wandering around. So whatever he was planning on doing with that, we'll, we'll, we won't find out. 
So he heads back to his apartment, which is covered in angel script. Well, technically angel graffiti. So I pictured yeah. like roving gangs of angels stealing cars and selling crack. <laughs> <laughs> it's part four. We're not doing part four, but that's what part four is about. Yeah, we should do part four. And I, I got to say, this actor <laughs> is terrible at doing blind. Why? Wow. Why couldn't they get a blind act? This guy was too perfect of an actor, and they <laughs> he just crushed it in the audition. <laughs> so yeah, so he gets back to his just seedy, crappy apartment, um, and the voice, and he's and he tells the voices in his head that he killed him just like they asked. Uh, but the voices in his head feel like he could have done a better job. Actually, yeah, he's getting like an. It's pretty obvious that he and the voice in his head need an HR mediator. He's like, oh, don't do this. <laughs> don't don't give me the silent treatment. We talked about this. If you're not willing to communicate, I'm not willing to communicate. Angels up in heaven. I don't like using the voice of God. <laughs> well, and yeah, but it's important to point out that the, the dynamic of the scene is that we hear him talking, but for the voices in his head, we hear like little kid trying to get that last little bit out of the milkshake. <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, so so he apparently he was supposed to cut the heart out of the kid when he shot him, and he did. How you kill an angel? He, well, you know, if you, if you've been watching this whole trilogy, you know, and we have, yeah. Um. <laughs> so it, so the voices in his head are super disappointed with him, and he pulls out a giant knife and starts stroking it like it was a dick. This is Eli's last week. This is ever. <laughs> this is just trembling in the dark, looking at knives too much. Yeah. <laughs> Having a fight with the voices in my head. Yeah, I mean, she's back now, but that was my week. Yes. <laughs> I don't have to immediately do dishes after I use them again. No. <laughs> that was the worst part of it. Just yeah. make a big pile. Yeah, you guys have a good That's system. what you do. You make a pile and you wash them when it's time because you're living a life full of joy and moments instead of just <laughs> slowly emptying bowls until they wear away beneath your tiny wrinkled hands. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, now that we've really set the theme for this movie, I feel like we can move right along. Okay, so now we move quickly to an angel fossil, and then we're off to meet Jumpy Angel. Oh, mm. and he does some sweet, sweet jumps. <laughs> he lands so soft. He does a superhero jump, but this is the first movie I've seen where someone does a superhero joint, but they throw their hands out like a gymnast. <laughs> So this villain will jump throughout this movie like smack. Oh, come on, Russian judge. 9.8. Fuck you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And the edit on this jump is insane. He, like first it's like Olympic diver, swan dive, and then like cut. And he's like David Blaine levitation land. From, from like, <laughs> so stupid. Also, he looks like he's it should be fucking belting one more out for his Duran Duran cover band. This fucking actor looks ridiculous in everything that he does. Black fingernails. Black fingernails. Come on, Why? people. They Look, I get makeup trying that and him being like, so what do you think, badass? But someone not answering that, oh, God, let's take that off you. Let's take that off. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Well, and also, are we supposed to believe that the angels are like, fuck, I'm going to Earth, better do the nails? <laughs> anyway. Just yeah. angels sitting there with their wings spread, a couple of Korean ladies at their hands. What do you think they're talking about? Are they talking about us? <laughs> do you think it's weird that like we're angels and they're Korean? Is this racist? I don't feel like it's racist. <laughs> they own the business, right? Like, why is it? It's not racist to do business for. So, I don't. I'm uncomfortable. I, I How's like your day? <laughs> so, and now we jump over to the uh, to the corner from the first two. I love it. He's been in all the, like, Walken's thinking, yeah, me and Steve Heitner both think this is a project worth completing. Right. And the coroner, like, there's a lot of ways to introduce a coroner. And I will admit, as someone who complained about the whole let's try on the dead guy's clothes, like, meme from the first movie, I've got to admit, the, the way they introduce him in this movie is worse, which is, ugh, some mom wants her kid's eyes back. <laughs> <laughs> But fuck you if you don't donate your organs. Seriously. Donate yes. your whole body to science. Yes. You don't need it. Just give your whole if, body. Don't 
donated it, it to matter. a fucking puppeteer. I mean, at the very yeah. least, someone should get something out at of this. You're trying. Like, like, I'd get a polite no thank you, I'm sure. <laughs> but like, try, like, put them out there. It's on my license. It takes 10. Also, you just like, you literally just like, but, and then they got to come get your shit. They burn you. They bring mostly wood ash to your family. It's lovely. You're saving some money. <laughs> Think of it as a monetary thing. Come on, yeah. Juice. Get on this. <laughs> All right, so we got Koreans, Jews, check, check. Okay, yeah, no, <laughs> we're moving down. The Although, list. hold on, is it racist that you would want a white person to do your nails instead? I feel like that would be more racist. No, it? yeah, it's, it's, is it? I mean, I, you know, I think when we try to parse like, out exactly how racist we're being, I think that's when this shows that it's. I think best. we're at a six. <laughs> so <laughs> I'll put us at a six five. I've been trying to keep you guys both at a one. Um, Wop. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right. I'll give you a point for that. Seven five. We're at a seven, seven five. five. Russian right. judges. <laughs> so the coroner now has the preacher kid's body with all those very evenly spaced bullet holes. <laughs> and he, yeah. he's going with his uh he's going with his old cop humor again. He goes, uh, lead poisoning, fun work environment. And keep it fun. Keeping it fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and again with the gunshots, the shooter made him into like a connect the dots of like the angel sign? Yes. The blind <laughs> He's person. He's blind, did. right? Yes. He's, okay. Just yeah. wanted to make sure I saw that correctly. <laughs> well, no, don't worry. They'll explain this in the deleted scenes. Will they? Oh, okay. Um, so, okay. And this were there is where deleted I... scenes? <laughs> I, I would imagine there were a lot of deleted scenes. I, I want scenes. to be clear. <laughs> Since he uh, is the only character that runs through the entire series aside from Christopher Walken, it is now a perfectly good argument to say that this series is about the coroner. That is yeah. the twist I did not see coming. <laughs> so, right. All right. So, and by the way, this kid, this is where I first started to figure out that, oh, this is the Nephilim from the first one, right? This is the kid um, that the last one was about. So the coroner realizes he sees the kid's mom's name or whatever, and then he suddenly remembers the eight second interaction that the two of them had in the second movie. Uh, about angels, though. I mean, to be fair, like, yeah, that's <laughs> true. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> one time a homeless guy pulled out his ball sack and very clearly had one ball that was like dead and black. And it only took a couple of seconds. But like, if I run into him again, I'm going to be like, oh, my God, it's dead ball sack guy. I remember you forever every time I cry and close my eyes. Like, yeah. how you doing? <laughs> Real estate, really. <laughs> so, uh, so the coroner takes his intern, who he's been fucking with throughout this scene, in to see his collection of relevant dead, burned human body photos. And, and basically from that, he's doing the zoom and enhance cliche, but they're yeah. doing it wrong. He's like, no, look at the body position. And then, like, fucking... The guy who invented the turducken, he traces the like <laughs> body and it doesn't make a person shape. It makes like an eat. It makes like a hammer shape. And he's like a human form. And I'm like, what human? Yes. The invisible child body recognizer tool in Photoshop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you just click near somebody. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They were cradling an invisible Slightly smaller person. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Fire. By the way, I believe Eli was referring to John Madden as the guy who I don't turducken? think he invented the turducken, but he is known for drawing things on a screen. Uh, he um, is actually a video game maker. You're oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> he made video games. Yeah, he did. Um, so yeah, and what he's learning, what he's realizing here is that this is the child of the lady from the second movie who fucked an angel, which he didn't know in the second. But at any rate, yeah. So he realizes that this is a half angel dead baby that he's got here yeah and at one point he's got his little helper guy with him as he's like enhancing the photos and he's like pointing stuff out to the guy and he's like hey so look here click in here look, look what does that look like to you and the guy's like oh like she got burned by napalm like really fast like hey man you jumped to <laughs> napalm like you know what that looks like real quick i was testing you you failed they don't bleed like we do all right i <laughs> <laughs> I, this internship's not going to turn into a job. I feel like I should tell you that now because you, <laughs> you well, guess just... napalm all the time. We had a guy who got stabbed the other day and you were like, oh, napalm knife. I just like, <laughs> I want to see your basement. Whether or not that's true. So, but of course, throughout all of this, Duran Duran is, is stomping his way towards him. Um, and also it, we get, so everyone's now in the police station, morgue station, uh, because the cops have also picked Christopher Walken up at the scene of the crime and are questioning him about the shooting. Yeah. 
And Walken is is being vague to the cops. Honestly, at this point, this series could be called Being Unhelpful to the Police. The movies. <laughs> the trilogy, is that, yeah. that is the only running that, you know, Christopher Walken's pauses and people not helping the police when they need it is the undercurrent of these three films. <laughs> Yeah, and I don't even know what they're going for with this scene, right? Because he's stand, standing there, he's talking to the cop, and he's being really charming, and the cop obviously really likes him, and he has weird answers to the questions. But none of this ever comes back. There's never any reason why we would watch this scene. Yeah, nope. he's just, like, missing information on his ID, right? That's it? Yeah. There's, like, no date of birth because he's so angel, mysterious. Like, yeah, what's he the just claim keeps here? turning to the camera and checking and being like, you get it? Because I'm an angel. Yeah, but like he can't make up a date, like right. or like it physically won't appear. It's like Back to the Future. Like what? I don't understand. Well, right, and, yeah, and he's got and, and he's like, oh, your your uh, driver's license just has the word Gabriel, no last name. Are you like Sting or whatever? And I'm just like, you're not allowed to just put whatever you want on your license. Well, how are we supposed to? Anyway, yeah. Um, and apparently he still has his, uh, even though he was turned into a human in the last movie, so he's no longer an angel, he apparently still has his knowing people's names and old nicknames powers. Yeah, that's a carryover. So I don't know why he didn't go for like birthday parties and bar mitzvahs. I'm just saying. <laughs> Make a lot of sense. It's a good And trick. again, they, I'm pointing this out because it will never come back in the movie and is completely unimportant like all the other stuff we'll be pointing out. <laughs> so now Duran Duran makes it to the police station. He comes in and he's like, where's your morgue? And the guy's like, you can't just go to the morgue. And he's like, I have FBI credentials. And he throws his FBI credentials up. <laughs> it's like it's like an FBI business card from Vistaprint. It might as well say Vistaprint on it. <laughs> right. Well, it does on the back. And they just put that on the back. Oh. And it turns out that he doesn't actually have it. He's just got like angel psychic paper from Doctor Who. Like that. They saw yeah. an episode of Doctor Who and they were like, ooh, ooh, I bet angels have that too. I bet angels have that too. <laughs> Right, and they, they do such a poor job of establishing. He uses this power one other time, which is the only reason you can tell. But at this point, because the guy buzzes him in the door and he doesn't know what that is, and I'm like, okay, so there's an angelic training program that includes credential forgery, but not door opening. <laughs> <laughs> And just like a tiny moment of how poorly made this movie is, you know how when you buzz someone into like a police thing, it makes that really horrible like eh, noise, right? But like in real life, you move through that door they as quickly do it as possible. So long. But they do it for <laughs> such a, eh, 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 while the actors just because it's Foley, so the actor wasn't like, oh, I better end this noise. So the doctor, the actor's like, I'm cool, I'm a cool guy, <laughs> eh, I'm a cool guy. Oh, what's this little speck of white on my perfectly blackened nail I got this in hot topic before I came here to kill the Nephilim still <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. someone in the back's just like fuck it come inside <laughs> yeah, yeah. so so we cut back down to where they're interviewing uh, Christopher well actually they're done interviewing Christopher Walken they got to interview the girlfriend who is also in this same building um, so Seawalks is, is leaving but first he has to grab a donut and because he's Seawalks it's amazing Honestly, it, watching him describe slash eat a donut would have been the best part of this movie. Yeah. <laughs> Chocolatey sprinkles covered in delicious. Yeah, I mean, later on in the movie, he orders breakfast and it is the single best the moment, best moment. In the, and it's just a breakfast order. Yep. It's, it's just, just, he is magnetic. He is he just is. magnetic. And the rest of this movie is like getting a hand job from a nun. <laughs> it's like no one wants no, to do this. That's pretty awesome, actually. I've, I, I think you're underestimating. We should really work. We should wor workshop these examples before we throw them out. <laughs> Quote, tweet our this episode and send it, and then Andrew and Thomas will announce it on the next show. Yes, What's it like getting a hand job from? What's the good analogy? <laughs> the non Christopher Walken parts of this movie are like getting a hand job from blank. Go guys! Hashtag Christopher Walken hand job. All right, so he runs into That's Duran Duran in the hall. Like, that is it not is. a new hashtag. No, it is. Yeah, no, you're right. Um, <laughs> I'm going to get an angry tweet from somebody. Hey, I've been doing this for years, motherfucker. You Johnny come <laughs> lately. So, all right. So now we go full Old West showdown with Duran Duran and Seawalk standing in the police hallway or whatever. Oh, and also, this is where we learn this angel's name for the first time. Zophiel. Zophiel, right. They have literally reached the last alphabetical angel. They're like, fuck, there can only be three guys. We're on Zophiel. I, I've got Zizix after this. That's it. Hey, I, 
I take quite a bit of that guy a day. I just want to say he's really balanced me out after all these years. <laughs> <laughs> Ask your doctor if Zofio is right for you. <laughs> Tears your heart out. I'm not depressed anymore. <laughs> That's what it feels like to be a human. <laughs> So he's like, yeah, get out of my... And, and of course, he has to give um, Christopher Walken some shit because he's human now. He's like, you used to be so badass, but now you're just a human. And he's like, yeah, I, I am. He's like, get out of my way, monkey. And I'm like, hey, dude, monkey is our word. <laughs> yeah, and th this actor is trying to walk in at Walken. He's trying oh. to, like, pause, like, match pauses with Walken. It's the best. <laughs> You can't do it. I, I thought they were yeah. going to, like, collapse into a neutron star of walking pauses. <laughs> like, so bad. <laughs> Just one teaspoon of this movie yeah, exactly. for a thousand pounds. Yeah. Um, so, a thousand oh, pounds. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so, yeah. So he wanders off. The, the girlfriend overhears part of this conversation and from it takes, I better follow this stranger to the morgue. Yeah. He's like, well, that looks suspicious. I think I'll follow and maybe fight that angel. Yeah, what? <laughs> so, yeah, that's what happens. All right. So now we head back to the morgue where the dead kid is having flashbacks. Even the dead people in this fucking movie are going to get dream sequences. Mm hmm. And Jesus. He, he remembers being chased by an angry mob and he remembers when he got shot like 30 seconds ago. And then he dreams about being stuck on a big naked pile of fuck zombies. Yep. yep. Yep, this right. is where we first meet our pile of fuck, fuck zombies, the star of the film. With, like, half-done elf from Lord of the Rings standing on top of the fuck zombies. Oh, my God. Like, okay, so this is supposed to be the main villain of the movie, right? This guy shows up with, like, long blonde hair looking like somebody's fat cousin or something. And he's, like, I, I literally wrote in my notes at this point, look, it's the least frightening person. <laughs> <laughs> Also, I've had this dream. If the person in white doesn't start singing all that jazz, it's a whole thing. I don't want to get into it. <laughs> and all that jazz. All right. Now the boy zombies. So, <laughs> Deja vu. Am I right? And right? also, Weird. With the, they, they keep using this pile of fuck zombies as the, as the image of like the terror that is to come. What? It, that is like, not at all intimidating. Like, just flip over i mean maybe i'm getting a wrong read <laughs> on what that pile's for but like i'm the guy that would make the best out of a bad situation i'm just saying <laughs> left I hand green yeah this is fun <laughs> i would be the worst looking person in that pile though can you imagine just a pile of gorgeous naked people and me and you land next to me for all eternity you're just like oh this is bullshit are you serious look at her Look at her. She's like eight dead zombies. I'm next to Eli. He's eating. How is he eating? There's no food. We're all dead. Excuse me. I'm climbing past. I'm climbing around. Excuse me. No, there's no moving in the fuck pile. So, so now the dead kid wakes up from that uh, horrible image in the dead guy fridge. And his, you know, we get like, uh, I've got him in my notes as Zofi from this point out because I didn't want to try to remember how to spell Zofiel. So, the girlfriend's suspiciously following Zofie around, and the coroner is watching the dead fridge to see if the kid comes out because he knows how these angels are about suddenly burning in these movies. Right. And there's a shot here of him like banging on the morgue door trying to get it open. And I feel like, just me, wouldn't those things be super easy to open just in case? Like, don't you want those <laughs> things to just, you just want those to pop right open, right? <laughs> That's the first thing. When you sit down for Morgue Design 101, you're like, we want everything to open from the inside. <laughs> Notches, levers, little sign on the inside, everything that says, oopsie, our bad. Yeah, right, right, exactly. A glow-in-the-dark sticker that says you are not trapped or something along those lines. So if you work in a morgue, let us know. Let us know. If that's not best practices, we feel like it should be. Maybe it's just that we've seen one, one too many angel movies, but... Yeah, so the coroner, so the, the kid pops out of the fridge. The coroner sees him not being dead, takes a Polaroid. This will not come in later. And then the kid runs off. Now, I want to point out about this kid. This kid is skinny like I'm skinny. He's like He looks like Ted Mosby, like not a convincing <laughs> action hero who's supposed to be a giant slayer of <laughs> right, evil angels right. for all of humanity's savior. No. Yeah, right. It's just this skinny fucking kid that just looks all bird chested and methed out and everything. And it's just like, um, dude, uh, 
I'm going to give that guy a shirt. He looks like yeah. Aladdin just got out of like a conditioner commercial. He's got like <laughs> feathered hair. It's so stupid. He looks like one of those like magazine ads at the back. He looks like a beforehand, like from skinny to scrunchy. Yes, yeah, like, exactly. <laughs> pull on your own arms and this is the before. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So, but he's like, they even have him do like the grab in the corner and give him the threatening punch. And I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> I can just imagine. It would be like, you know, it would be like getting into a fight with a little kid at this point. Uh, not that I, never mind. Moving on. Noah fought a kid in Ireland. We don't like to talk about it. <laughs> I wouldn't say fought. I would say kicked his ass. All right. So, yeah. But anyway, this, so I mean, we Sophie, all fought him. <laughs> it's three on one. <laughs> he had it coming. So, like, like, I'm sorry, but his phone was practically charged. Mine was almost dying. So, okay. <laughs> So Zophie shows up a minute too late after the kids already run off and he just has to stand there being ridiculous because that's all this actor is able to do. But it's too late. And the coroner's just like, oh, um, he went that way. And he's like, really? And he's like, yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. I'm not I'm not a part of this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, OK, so now the girlfriend shows up a second later and it's just her and the and the coroner left in the morgue and she wants some answers. But oh, my goodness, she cannot act. Oh. This is where we as the audience learn Ooh. she cannot <laughs> act. Shh. Take a second take. She, she, like, no, you don't just stand there and tell me he, I just <laughs> lost the only, th genuinely, all of our notes at this point are just like, woof. Yeah. Maybe <laughs> so cut. She now, now, like, you know your lines. Yeah, she doesn't even know like what sentences are ending with like questions or state like yeah, right. You're telling me he just walked out of here. Yeah. Like, so, it's so bad. It's like, like she's doing a bad Christopher Walken impersonation. She's like, he does pauses. <laughs> I am also a good actor. Sometimes the lions gotta get up. <laughs> Oh, she is she this chick is bad enough to be in a fucking Christian movie. And what's more is that they like really put her through the paces of acting. Right. Like this is the one character in this movie where you actually needed a real actor. And she is fucking awful. Oh, holy shit. Is she fucking bad? All right. So now we cut to sea walks um, who comes across the Nephilim kids stealing a shirt out of a car, you know, because cars. Have shirts. Have outfits that fit you perfectly? Yeah, absolutely. Shoes, <laughs> socks, clothes, underwear. Absolutely. I always, I carry seven different size outfits in the back of my Prius at all times. Yeah, well, and when you have a 27-inch waist, it's super easy to find that kind of stuff. So, yeah, the kid, the, and, and they, I should point out that when he was having the flashback, there was a brief image of, like, the kid running from a mob and Christopher Walken putting him in his trench coat. Which is a weird pick. If you're being chased by a mob of kids and in front of you is Christopher Walken wearing nothing but a trench coat, <laughs> I'd say you go with the mob of kids. You deal with it. He was after the mob. Of, I mean, he was obviously going towards the mob of kids. So, yeah, but so you're kind of left wondering. And what's these... happening in your life that that's all? I don't, don't want to get into it. You're, just, you're having a weird day. <laughs> I've had that fantasy. I've actually kind of worked it out in my head how that. But anyway, um, so, yeah, so. They run into each other here, and you're kind of wondering as a as an audience member whether they know each other or not, right? They don't. The movie gives you nothing to fucking grab onto here, but they don't. They meet. They have a bizarre, weird <laughs> guy at the subway is talking to you conversation. You're doing slam poetry? You're yeah. a stranger. Why are you doing slam poetry, man? At I me. knew you were born both times. It was what? fantastic. What? All right. Huh? I, mean, you got, I don't have anything. Those are, the, Sorry. those are the words that they wrote me wrote down for me to say, and they're paying me. So yeah, so now we go to the coroner guy, uh, so that we can have the obligatory studying ancient texts montage. See, he saw the the uh, symbol on Zophiel's neck, mm -hmm. and so now he's looking that up in his handy dandy angelic symbol dictionary. Right, he, he, and Zophiel's the spy of God, but. This is how stupid this montage is. He's researching, 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 and then he has literally written in his notebook, angels plus women <laughs> equals bad news. Research, 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 really bad news. Yes. 
This is the level of excellence <laughs> we can come to expect from these movies, people. There's oh. a whole new meaning to spell it out for us, huh? I wanted like janitor Matt Damon to walk in and help him solve it. <laughs> like, angels plus women right, equals bad news. Window. All right, well, so bad news minus women equals <laughs> angels. You get it? You get it? No? Um, also, after the whole, like, the formula of angel plus woman, he just starts writing plot points on the bottom of his legal <laughs> pad, pad, one after the other. God's wrath, flood, genocide. <laughs> I, I thought he was about to write, the Jews did it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then we learn the vi final villain of this movie's name will be Periel? Periel. Periel. How close can we get our final villain's name to period the movie? Yeah, exactly. What do angels wash their hands with? <laughs> I, yeah, right. So, and and also, like, he, he, because he writes, like, genocide, and then he writes period at the bottom of his notes, and he goes, period. The hell is period? As though, like, why did you write it down? You don't just <laughs> write down words you don't know on paper when you're, anyway, yeah. Knifkischer for her. Well, oh, yeah. I think I'm what having a stroke again. <laughs> so, if you wrote it down, man. So, all right. But Let just, me tweet that. How <laughs> unprecedented. Um, but just as he's about to give up his study, uh, Maggie, the girlfriend uh, character, shows back up. And she has not learned to act since the last scene, in case you were no. curious. And, by the way, people are just milling around this police morgue <laughs> no, constantly. Right. I don't know what time it is, but she's just like, oh, um, hi, I was just walking around in this police station. I'd like to talk to you, coroner, now. Again, it was the following day. The, yeah. the day before, that I evil angel guy was just walking around wherever he fucking felt like it. They have no, well, no idea what's happening. He has the happening. FBI powers, but yeah, yeah, how the fuck she managed it. Yeah, she must have slept in one of those fridges or something. I don't know. So now we cut to Duran Duran the next morning. He's stalking around, and he's hunting, and we learn this when he... Finds a hair on the street and slowly licks it. <laughs> Ugh, this movie has gotten yuckier and yuckier across the series. Like, I'm glad we're not watching movie four because there's no question Christopher Walken just like puts a turd in a hot dog bun and is like, oh, mm. <laughs> he went south. Daniel Shat here. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, such a bad job with the angel powers. Like, we have sniffing. Uh, fast at going downstairs because of <laughs> jumping power and hair tasting now is what's happening. Yeah, well, and FBI credential powers, but yes, yeah, exactly. And, and I just, Vista print. I that was their other this, power. Yeah, exactly, exactly. A Vista print account. Um, but I just want this scene to be longer. I want him, you know, no nope, bum pube, no nope, another bum pube. Ah, oh, there he is. But we get. So has he gone down on Daniel? How is he like? Oh, that's there. Yep, that, that's Daniel. Yep. So meanwhile, we get we get Daniel just sitting by a, a a pond or something, having more visions of death and angel wars. I get it. He's having a flashback to the reason Connie attended. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> Pile of fuck zombies, guys. Pile of you. If you missed it, you missed it. All right, and and then he starts seeing like angelic script and stuff in the water, or maybe not. Fucked if I know, but this is apparently pivotal to the movie, right? This is where he gets the mission or whatever that he's going to be on for the rest of the movie. But we are not cued into what the fuck it is. No, ever. we sure aren't. We sure aren't. And I mean, I don't mean we're not cued into it now. I mean, at this moment as we record, we still have no fucking idea. Yeah, no, we watched the movie, and that's why we know this moment is when that happens. But, like, yeah. <laughs> there's no point in the movie at which it's explained to us that that's what happened. No. So, okay. So, first thing Daniel apparently needs to do is go to the assassin's apartment. But this is where he's going to have to show us how awesome he is at door kicking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I can't. Describe, again, like this is definitely not one of the movies that we watch for you to watch along. But if you can make it to him, just like uh, good, good imagine. <laughs> All right, so here's here's my best visual representation. Imagine that there was a wall of Jello. You rested your foot against it and then just pushed it in. Have you ever like, seen I, a souffle cave in? Like have you ever lost <laughs> a souffle? <laughs> 
Turn so, like, that on its side. I'm going to I'm going to do my notes, and I had already seen that on the best worst thing on our notes. Eli had written in a best worst door kick. So I was looking forward. To, I was warned. And when this happened, I fucking laughed for two and a half minutes. It's amazing <laughs> how weak and I like like it's it's hard to imagine. I ima- I would think like sitting here listening to this, like how weak could it possibly be? Right. But yeah, I, that's that's only because <laughs> words fail us. It's like the karate instructor for the six year old holding a door and then just throwing it when the kid kicks it. Yeah, oh, <laughs> what a kick. What a kick you got there. <laughs> yeah. Just breaking a board with your hands and a toddler's like, do I have psychic powers? <laughs> yeah. As long as your parents keep paying the yep. thirty nine ninety nine every Thursday. You're yes. a ninth level black belt. Yes, yes. you are. <laughs> Learn the ancient art of martial arts because there are guns now and they don't matter anymore. <laughs> Actually, just so you know, at Eli Bosnick, I take BJJ. I'll shoot you. I'll shoot you right in your throat. There you go. Look, I solved it, everybody. I'll shoot you in your throat. I don't know. What do you do if I shoot you? That's what I I I can't wait to watch Eli get choked out by some BJJ guy next time we're at a convention. (laughs) Come on, Joe Rogan. Dance back. Use your gun, Eli. Where's your gun? What's up? Oh, you're unconscious because I choked you out? Okay. And we're unarmed the entire time? Yeah. So, okay. (laughs) So he kicks in the door. He goes in. This is where this is the seedy assassin apartment. But the assassin has killed himself. And but he's got a book next to him, a book of of, of Braille in which he has written the angelic symbol for all work and no play over and over again. Okay, real quick. So he's got the blood painted angel glyphs on top of Braille. Yeah. I mean, that's a stupid place to draw anything, right? A Braille book. Is that ever useful? No one's going to see what you drew. Yeah, right. But yeah, so, okay. Zofi, meanwhile, the Duran Duran angel is also heading for that very same apartment. Oh, no. Well, I, there's no, like, window tackle no. thing or anything. Like, I wanted them to both, like, dive at the doggy door and get stuck. <laughs> like, ow. Ow, all right. Okay. Yeah, this is awkward. You back you out push. your shoulder first. Ow. You Twist. push. No, turn. No, left. Twist. You turn. I'm twi- the twist. other. Turn counterclockwise. Our and then I'll left. pull it out. Our are getting stuck. What? What if we kick fight through the door? <laughs> so you just we both put our feet in through the door and you I kick and I kick. I am a pretty devastating door kicker, I'll have you Bicycles. know. I need some butter. <laughs> well, earth balance. I'm lactose intolerant. So, <laughs> all right. So, yeah. So the, uh, Daniel runs off. Zofi comes in um, and realizes that he's gone. So he um, demonstrates another one of his interesting angelic powers. Taste the eyes of the dead blind guy, which allows him to see the image that the eyes saw, even though the eyes didn't work and he's dead. Yes. He should have seen Braille. <laughs> just, like, see a bunch of dots. Oh, fuck. I have to lick his fingers. Damn it. <laughs> Shit. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So he licks the dead guy's eye, which allows him to see his dead memories. Um, and I, I just wanted to flash cut to like Eli jerking off in front of him in a leather octopus suit or something. But no, <laughs> what he learns is, yeah, the guy just now jumped out of that open window. I pr- he's like, fuck, man, I did the whole perching thing in the aisle. I could have looked out the window. Eli, did you <laughs> see anything in Ray Comfort's soul? Did you get anything? <laughs> saw quite a bit. I saw love. I saw fear of who he was becoming. <laughs> saw the inability to turn back. We're here for you, Ray. We're here for you. So now it's time we to cut over to take beautiful <laughs> movies with your guests, Ray Comfort, now an atheist. <laughs> Stay in your lane. All right. So now it's time to go to a donut shop <laughs> where the kid, the, the, the Daniel, the, the Nephilim kid is, is doing eating his much- best Heath impersonation. <laughs> <laughs> How do you guys eat donuts? Not as fast as you can. <laughs> Why would you go slowly through donuts? No, no, no. By the way, it's free donut day at Dunkin' Donuts as of this recording. <laughs> oh, Check it, it really? out, everybody, because you can't if you're listening to this after yeah, not no, now, which gag. you're not. Never Fun mind. Fun fact, I can afford a donut. I'll go ahead and just purchase <laughs> one for the 30 cents they charge. I'll buy 12 of them, throw 11 in the garbage, and then eat the one donut that I want is what I'll do. <laughs> Free sheet of paper day next week at Staples. Everybody. <laughs> hey, it could have been it could have been free Danish day. It could have been worse. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> so yeah. So fuck Danishes on record. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting real on these shows now, guys. 
So, yeah, so he's eating a bunch of donuts and also drinking, I believe, a glass of sugar. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what? I mean, what was... It I mean, feels he like this is coffee the same way that Lucinda and I do, so I appreciate it. Yeah, I'm this honestly, I didn't even get the gag for a second. It's like, oh, so he takes it like, yeah, my wife. <laughs> <laughs> Keep going, motherfucker. What are you running out? <laughs> it, it was such a weird scene. It feels like the whole thing was from like a different movie. Like the editor got a piece of this actor's reel and thought it was a scene. <laughs> like, yeah, like, no. Oh, yeah. He eats donuts like a motherfucker. All of a sudden, pumpkin and honey bunny start yelling. <laughs> You fucking bricks, but no, we're not doing that. No, no. Sorry. angels. Sorry, and is the point here that angels love sugar because they're part bird? Is it they'll, a bird? No, see, they'll explain this in such a way that it'll make perfect sense. A few scenes, it, t- it ties now. together beautifully. Yeah. Oh, it's like a motorcycle okay. thing. It becomes <laughs> science. All right, so now we're at the coroner's house. He has taken Maggie, the girlfriend, to his house to try to fuck her into not acting for a minute or something. <laughs> He's also talking to his plants here as sort of like flavor to the exposition based scene that we're in he's like uh mm-hmm. oh, have some water there tony uh don't forget to capture sun and turn it into carbon monoxide damn no. t- t- no. steve <laughs> not that <laughs> please don't do that plants if you're any if any plants are listening please we have plenty Boris, uh, Vincent, relax. So. <laughs> <laughs> well and also the conversation is so fucking stupid cuz he's like have you ever heard of a Nephilim? It's a half angel, half human. And she's like, are you saying that Daniel's a Nephilim? And he's like, that is what I'm saying. But I have not gotten anywhere near close enough Am to I? that for you to assume it <laughs> I'm, I'm, at I'm, this I'm, point. The script is terrible. I'm seriously asking. I don't know. Am I saying that? <laughs> you know Milwaukee, right? Are you saying Daniel's Milwaukee? Oh, okay. I get what's going yes. on. You just <laughs> All right. Now, I'm with you now. I I, I, I want to take issue with you here, Heath, because I believe you just said this script is awful. This script contains the sentence, I've had four gutted hermaphrodites burned to pitch right under my nose. Also, three French hens. It's from a nice song. <laughs> <laughs> Five golden but, but, rings. Yeah. By the way, I put that in my notes. Auto completed after four gut. Oh, well, in yeah. that case. <laughs> I wanted the girl to go, does this line ever work Do you? mean, you? did hermaphrodites burn to black pitch right under your nose? Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> Are you saying Daniel's black pitch? No, shut, <laughs> shut up. And I, I love, too, at the end of this, like, you know, he's like, uh, you know, this happened in the first movie. This happened in the second movie. He turns to where he's like, any suggestions? And I'm like, um, I hear we'll get better if we alternate lines on row, row, row your boat. I, I hear <laughs> row, that'll help. Row. Four. Right. I feel like saying all the stupid shit that happened over the last two movies was a bad idea, right? Don't you want to <laughs> start fresh? No? No. Also, was I? Was it just me or was this guy just gargling his saliva through the whole scene? Oh, my Ooh. God. It was off. Somebody get him one of those dentist vacuums just <laughs> for the whole scene. It's ridiculous. He was like, I bet you I could do this whole scene with a mouthful of juice. It's like when we're doing the count off at the beginning of our records and I take a big gulp and you're like three and I'm like, oh, four, four, oh, oh, five, <laughs> seven, ten. That's how Eli counts. Um, so yeah, okay, so now... Right after he blows somebody. Yeah. <laughs> Sophie has tracked Daniel to the donut shop and the donut guy, the donut cashier isn't going to tell... He, he goes to the guy and he's like, hey, have you seen a guy about this tall with brown hair? And he goes... Yeah, that without a specific description like that, I can definitely help you. But I want fifty dollars for it. I wanted the angel to just be like, uh, let me lick your eyeball just in case. I want to make sure it's the same guy. <laughs> <laughs> also, by the way, this donut shop got a D from the like sanitary grade yeah. people. Well, like, what puts you over the top f- from F to D? How do you get it like the cum they found was HIV negative, so you get a D now. Like spirit, it's a D for effort. Yeah. <laughs> All right, but I, but I do want to say this is the this is the closest this movie comes to a a truly good line because the guy's like, "I'll need fifty dollars." He's like, "If you don't help me, you'll spend the next thousand years chained to a damp wall, wondering what's been crawling through your bowels for the last seven hundred and fifty years." And I'm like. No, that's pretty good. I have so many questions about this. Okay, what? so um, he gets first, 250 years off. Well, for, so the wall, it, it's not wet. It's just damp. Just damp. Just Is damp. that does that come into play? Does a damp wall often create a very slow assworm? 
Also? I think I, I, is that what's being implied here? If, if it's if it's mildew and ass worms is the reason why you don't want it perpetually damp like that. Well, and why does it take 250 years for the ass worm to even show up? The damage. It's, it's, it's if it was a wet it, wall, it would only take a hundred. Why I, wouldn't you want it to take only a hundred if you were making a threat? <laughs> dance back, ass worms! Dance back! <laughs> so, Make a wet wall. Starting a lot of feuds on this show. <laughs> yeah. the guy's got access to water. He's got a damp wall. <laughs> Just use more. Make yeah. a faster ass worm. Like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Think it through, is what I'm saying. Yeah. So, okay. And this is the second and last time that he'll use his FBI power thing um, because he, he holds up a napkin, but he makes the guy think it's a $50 bill. And he's like, yeah, man, I saw the dude. He was scarfing down donuts. And he's like, yeah, spontaneous tissue regeneration makes you need sugar. And I'm like, oh, now it's science. Got it. So it that's why, all right. That's why Wolverine's always chugging maple syrup. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> so, and, and also I love too that the answer from this guy, the cashier is like, yeah, he's in the bathroom. <laughs> yeah. It's like, fuck, man. If I just stick, stu if I stood here for another three minutes, I could have kept my napkin. Motherfucker. To which, to which Zophiel has the best response. He goes, hiding in shit, just like a monkey. I'm just saying, so much of this movie is now going to enter my lexicon. I just, hiding in shit, just like a monkey, chained to a damp wall. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess since the last door kick was so awesome, they go for another one here. That's this guy's entire resume. Just bullet point, I kick doors. <laughs> Half angel, kick doors. We'll travel. Well, not just kick doors, but he's also got a super sweet sleeve knife. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So Zophie is coming up to the to the bathroom to go fight Daniel, and right before he can get there, Daniel kicks the door off its hinges again. Noodle legged bullshit kick, uh, but the door flies off the hinges, and they get into a fight. But Zophie has a switchblade athame, apparently. I guess, which they use to have a shove fight. Yeah, they do. They have. <laughs> he has a knife, but they do not have a knife fight. He, he might no. as well set it on the floor and be like, I'll need this later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, even down to the point where like the, the Daniel blocks a knife stab with a thing that doesn't slow his hand down. Yeah, that's <laughs> nothing. If you dodge, just dodge without a prop. You don't <laughs> like dodge and put something out that the knife goes. That's just. A waste. Like this, this fight scene. Like it, honestly, it felt like at one point, like it, Zophie should have been like, "Hey, dude, you want to push me one time? Because otherwise, I would just catch you as you run by. You just probably want to push me before you." Yeah, matador stuff with a knife fight is not your <laughs> proper way of doing things. <laughs> so, so now it's time for the chasing, which starts by jumping through a window. That's right. It's a prophecy movie, guys. It's oh, and there's some there's some <laughs> sweet parkour going on. A lot of fence parkour, smooth leaping. It's 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 a lot of the same sets. Like, did you guys feel like this was the exact same set as the one she ran up in the last movie when Walken was trying to get Brittany Murphy to hit her with a car? Like, a lot of the same sets. I feel like they switched <laughs> movies day to day. Like, they were like, all right, <laughs> uh, PM crew, get in here. You get to film <laughs> Prophecy 3 now. <laughs> yeah, right, right, exactly. Which would explain why it changes from day to night quite randomly sometimes. In this it does. Like, yeah, but I, I got to be honest, like this was probably the best stunt work that any of these three movies offered. This parkour section? Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, it was not good, but like it was better than anything else we'd really gotten in the series so far. They're like running like over fences, doing a few cool jumps. There's like racks of clothing rolling everywhere that yeah, they're dodging. There's like it's, uh, apple carts full of tiny little apple carts. Too. <laughs> from the dry cleaner from earlier in the other movie. I'm saying it's all the same scenes. Are you <laughs> So, yeah, but now uh, Duran Duran eventually catches up with him and he grabs him and he's about to pull his heart out. But just then, Seawalks drives into him. Hits him with, with his car. car. Yeah, exactly. And the kid gets away. Uh, so instead of chasing the kid some more, we have to have a, 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 a little dialogue between Christopher Walken and Zophiel. And look, this is a terrible movie, but one of the not terrible moments in it is Zophiel being like, oh, I'm going to beat you up walking and walking the actor very clearly. He's like, hey, 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 don't, don't touch me. <laughs> and he's like, oh, all right, sorry, Mr. Walken. <laughs> you, don't, you haven't earned touching me because we're in the same movie. <laughs> and then Christopher Walken explains that having orgasms as a human is way better 
than being an angel. Yeah. Is that what this meant? I think. I was so confused by this. Oh, absolutely. Like, it sounded like he was talking about like buying a prostitute. Yeah. And then dying on the inside and that that death the death is good. The death I, well that's that's what was so weird. Yeah, cuz he kept saying that like uh, having sex with a woman is like dying, but he meant that in a good way that yeah. I, yeah. Does he the have little, a human penis now? Because he's not an angel. That's a good question. Well, still the, does he have the penis vagina combo? Yeah. Right. What's your definition of a human penis? Christopher Walken's penis. <laughs> we should we should publish an article in a magazine about this. Yeah. Exactly. And hashtag and, Christopher Walken's penis. So. <laughs> Same guy. Seriously, you will be hearing from my lawyer, Andrew Dores. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now we cut to the Nephilim kid. He's going back to the church where he got shot at the beginning of the movie. He's perching over a giant bunch of floor blood. But he's floor perching because he's only half angel. He's not. Right, he can't get up on something like, yeah, not yet. He must learn stand and then learn fly. <laughs> so the girlfriend comes in here. And by the way, they're they're in this like uh, the, the what the abandoned church from the second yeah. one or whatever, and all the windows are boarded up. But like, I feel like somebody like boarded them up, and somebody's like, "Who put them all parallel?" I said askew, and they had to like <laughs> fix look. them into a skewness and put like <laughs> random pieces of cardboard. It's so yeah. Uh, so and again, this actress cannot even like pull off walk into a room and look at person without fucking it up. Nope, that's how bad she, she like, is. You walks could in not... sideways and then turns her head all the way around. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I would, I don't think anyone in the world could act this poorly on purpose. I would challenge any. The greatest actors in the world could not pull off this bad a performance intentionally. <laughs> all right, so they kiss, and he gets like they both get more. Silly angel war fuck zombie pile flashbacks. Right, she's in the fuck zombie pile, and she's like, no, 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 no I don't, no, I don't like it. I'm not into and, this. Yeah, right. And then he tries to shoo her away like old Yeller, like fucking warhorse. He's like, I said, get out of here. Yeah. Get out of here, you. <laughs> it was absolutely what they were going for. But he does but... not euthanize her. <laughs> At least she continues to be not in this yet, movie. Not yet. Later on, we'll, we'll get to it. We'll get to it. So, yeah. So he runs her off. She leaves. And watching her run across the park, parking lot all sad was so amazing. I just oh kept God. going back and watching it again. <laughs> she was like, I need car cry jogging. <laughs> so... Why the why would you ask this? And I feel like at this point, the director's just fucking with her, right? He's like, okay, now what I want you to do, I want you to be sad, but also disappointed, but also frightened, but also jogging. Go. Uh, sad? Uh. <laughs> yeah. So, okay, but as she's running to her truck, she sees that Sophie's coming, right? And she knows that he's evil because she followed him to a morgue earlier in the movie and then he left, and she has no other knowledge of him. So she runs off to call 911 and tell him that she just saw a suspicious angel murderer. Yeah, she's going to call the guns. Hi, uh, police, an angel's trying to kill my boyfriend again? Never mind. I'll just do, I'm going to handle this on my own. You know what? Now, so, <laughs> can you, there's a pedophile in a school? No, still no. Still, mm -hmm. I don't understand Oof. the, uh, there's a silent alarm at a church. Okay. Oh, awesome. <laughs> We're You'll all be there. here any second. Yeah. <laughs> all right. But meanwhile, inside, we have to have another angel fight. And this fight really opens up the pirouettes in a way that fight scenes don't usually. <laughs> jump joust is what I have, <laughs> have this call. It's a very, very much jump tackle based fight. Yeah. yeah. And but, the bad angel's doing like figure skating triple lutzes yes, to land yeah, out of exactly. his jump tackles. They're, exactly. they're, they're very, again, they're beautiful. I mean. <laughs> Russian judge was not impressed. So Daniel wins the fight and he uh, ends up pinning Zofie to the wall with the pipe that he was fighting him with. You know, all awkwardly. Yeah. By the show, by the left shoulder only. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, it could have gone with something a little less ridiculous. Um, and then he runs off and Daniel steals a motorcycle. Yep. In, in kind of a, like a prickish, like, man, it seems to me like you could have waved him down at least. You didn't yeah, have to. He just grabs a random motorcyclist and murders him and is Pretty like, much, guys, yeah. how the movie needs to go. I'm going to be driving <laughs> on this motorcycle west from here on out. So, 
by. Yeah. So he drives off. Now Maggie goes That's in. It is. That's the pretty much it. The, <laughs> the rest of the movie will just be that character driving around on a motorcycle looking silly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So That's all literally got. all that happens. That's the <laughs> plot of this movie. The plot of We're, this movie. The entire movie consists of people moving towards or away from each other for reasons we don't understand. <laughs> yep. That's it. So, okay. So now the girlfriend comes back in and we find out that the character is no brighter than the actress. Okay. Let's wait a second here. <laughs> so, Zophiel is stuck to the wall by his shoulder. He's got a pole through his shoulder, sticking him to the wall. And he's like, um, oh, good, you're here. <laughs> um, can you come closer to me? Can you give me a hand? She just shoots a harpoon through his right shoulder. Like, oh, <laughs> oh, that's so much God. better. Oh. <laughs> yeah, and his, and his response isn't, hey, can you call 911? Can you get me an ambulance? It's like, can you stand closer to where I am? And she's like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I can do that. Absolutely. This seems safe. I need to move that plot forward. <laughs> <laughs> that what? The what forward? <laughs> anyway, so yeah, so he pulls the pipe out of himself, falls to, it seems like he would have done that right away if he had that option, falls to the ground, and then climbs the actress. In a way that looks like that actress, that was not a stage direction. She looked yes, very unprepared yes. for that. Yeah. Like, oh, oh, hey, Dave, we didn't say we were doing this in the scene. <laughs> uh, cut. Cut. No? All right. <laughs> so, okay. So then he starts talking and she gets creeped out and runs away, but he grabs her sweater so that she can be in a tank top for the rest of the movie. I'm not complaining. I'm and, and, and so he can sniff her shirt like he's a bloodhound. Well, I feel like that was their excuse, but then he never loses track of her again for like, the entire uh, movie. I wanted so. next scene for him to just be like headbutting a fence, digging frantically. Like <laughs> <laughs> She's under here. She went under here. So, so she runs Guy walks her. by with a suitcase full of drugs. <laughs> <laughs> This is weird. This is a weird movie. This you got to cover yourself in coffee when there's uh, when there's uh, <laughs> not a racist. It was the you. drugs. It was the drugs. <laughs> so okay, so she runs out to her truck where she keeps her gun. Um, Sophie follows her out and just gets in the truck with him uh, with her, and he's like, "Yeah, I know you've got a gun, but you there's no bullets in it. They're over here." And he's but like, you Damn. don't keep the bullets in it. So, yeah. ugh. <laughs> if you need to throw it at someone, it's heavy, apparently. Yeah. yeah. She decides, to, which makes her trust him, by the way. She's like, all right, this is a road movie now between the two of us. <laughs> Up here, yeah, Jesus Christ. License plate games. <laughs> <laughs> so apparently now they're going to drive towards him who's driving towards fuck knows what. And also, we now cut over to Christopher Walken, who's also driving west. And playing and he, his trumpet. Yeah, for humor. I, oh my I God, was, get a fucking trumpet case. It's a right, violin it's a, case. Yes. Why? What, <laughs> what? Can you not see? It clearly doesn't fit. It's not held in place. Just get... How hard is this? <laughs> He's that carrying idiots. around a violin case with a trumpet. With a trumpet just like movie. clanging around in it. <laughs> <laughs> Idiot. So yeah, yeah, and and so like he's driving down the road and he starts playing with his trumpet because he's he's Gabriel, you know, and he Gabriel plays trumpet and he turns off Earth Angel, which is a good song. Yeah, no, it is by the it Penguins, is. but it's guy <laughs> like the ones on the pants I'm wearing. Angel. He's an right Earth Angel. How dare you? Yes. <laughs> <It's laughs> All right, and now. so I guess now that this movie's going out <laughs> of its way to remind you that they did indeed spring for a walk, and I guess we can afford to pause for a quick break. But let me give Act Three the hard sell before we do. Will any character ever serve any function? Will the rest of this movie just be driving? Will anything that happened to this point factor into any of the other scenes in the movie? Find out why those are literally the best questions I could come up with and more when we return for the abridged conclusion of Prophecy 3, The Ascent. Brothers and sisters, welcome to the Church of the Atheist Straw Man. It is a totally meaningless day, my brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Totally, yeah, totally, totally, totally meaningless, totally mm -hmm. meaningless. Yep, 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 yep. Today, we're going to be talking about how mad we are at God, and I, for one, am so mad. So mad. So mad. So mad. So mad. That's right. So That's mad. right. 
Because even though God is totally real, he's a big old jerk face, and that is 100% what I believe. Me too. This is a phase. This is a phase. And, and well, we all know that Christians are right and will totally change our minds about this later. Let's turn our hymnals to page 23 and sing, I'm just doing this to get back at my dad. All together now. I'm just doing this to get back at my dad. This is a phase. I'll change my mind when I have kids. Lovely. Lovely. <laughs> I love it. I've been trying to make Heath sing for so long, and you know. <laughs> and we're back for more of this shit. When we last left off, the movie had descended into a series of vehicles driving to an unknown destination for an unknown reason, and that's where we're going to pick up. <laughs> Road trip. Road trip movie between Sophie and Harriet. <laughs> let's let's point this out. Maggie? The scene opens and he goes, "Come on, don't do that." And I wanted them to be playing twenty questions, like vegetable <laughs> on, I'm going on a trip. Um, uh, yeah, let me give you a pro tip at home: uh, play twenty questions, but lie about the first <laughs> thing. You will kill someone in the car with you. Just be like, think of a cow and then be like, vegetable. You will spend 50 minutes be like, all right, I'll give you 10 more questions. You will spend 50 minutes and then at the end, someone in that car will kill themselves. So. I'm confused by the animal, mineral, vegetable. Thing. Are there not things that are outside of those three categories? Could you not? No, be? Of course not. Everything's an animal. Everything's vegetable. one of those three things. Yeah, yeah. Start, start with a protest and you fuck people right up. Yeah. All right. So, so Zofi pronounced protest. Oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> Thermometer. So, so uh, Zofie is mad because Maggie won't drive the truck faster. Maggie is the character's name. I don't know where Harriet came from earlier. But uh, so she says, you want me to drive faster? I'll drive faster. And she crashes into a rock. And you know how when you crash into a rock, it only really slows down the passenger. Well, that's how this works. So she grabs the gun and the bullets and runs off. <laughs> but <Yeah. laughs> not all right away. Her plan. No. Her plan's based on like, playground tag strategy she like runs out one way <laughs> with the he gun. goes back he in comes yeah. around and she runs back the other way to the other side gets the bullets so stupid yeah and she so she's running off and she's like loading the gun as she's running and like bullets for are just an hour for oh an hour she loads a hundred bullets into this <laughs> it's, it's, it's a six shooter am okay. i right there's six yeah, yeah. Yes. okay <laughs> Yeah, not only does she like she she runs off for an hour trying to put bullets in this thing, but then finally she stops and puts six fucking bullets in it. <laughs> Wait a minute. Um yeah. So and of course he's he you know <laughs> she just got like eight in the chamber all stuffed in. <laughs> when he took the gun, if he had emptied it out and it had just been like a <laughs> string, a bun, just standing there, so disappointed. <laughs> She's pounding it down with a stick. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So he starts, he's following her um, and she turns around. She's like, I'm ready to shoot you. I'm like, I'm ready for everyone to shoot everyone. Just get this fucking movie over with. So she shoots him on my instruction. Well, everything this actress does makes sense if she's an eight year old. First, she, <laughs> She's like, don't keep what, cut it out. Stop evil angel. I'll shoot you. I'll do it. <laughs> And everything else she does is approximately the actions of an eight-year-old. And he does the play dead thing, and she's like, oh, better go over and check him. This is the stupidest character in a movie we've watched, and we've watched a Vin Diesel movie. <laughs> <laughs> Only the Patreons got that one, in case you were wondering. Yeah, so it... it and also, this is where he starts to explain, because he pops back up and he's like, I'm not dead because I'm an evil angel and you can't shoot oh. evil angels. I'm sorry, Noah. Sorry to interrupt. He says, fact, I am an yes. angel. <laughs> Dwight Schrute is an angel, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> my, my note here is fact. Bears beats Battlestar Galactica. <laughs> which is actually Jim, Jim doing Dwight. I am an angel. <laughs> they wrote that and said it out loud and filmed it. And everyone went, yeah. <laughs> <sighs> And just in case, because at this point in the movie, I would think most people are saying, hmm, I wonder what the plot of this movie is. So now they they have, they spend a few minutes with Zofi explaining 
the plot to her, but incorrectly. <laughs> right? Like lying to her about what the plot of the movie is. Yeah, but they we never it's not like an unreliable narrator thing where we find out that's untrue. Nope. It could be true because the movie has no context. He's just like, he's trying to stop Periel from rising and he's gotta take the staff to Garan La. And she's like, I you know, I watched all the dailies. When did we shoot those scenes? Oh, we did not. <laughs> we did not. But now we're on a road trip and we're like a weird abusive couple for the rest of this movie. It's weird. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Literally it, I, at the end of this scene, she goes, why should I believe you? And he's like, because that's what happens at the end of the in the movie. You got to you <laughs> yes. believe me. It's yeah, also, script. he's following the, the, the old rule of if you want to gain a young woman's trust, touch her face a lot. It was a quick transition from gunfight to gentle caress of the cheek, wasn't it? <laughs> so... Story song as old as time, <laughs> wrong as old as rhyme. I feel like also a quick transition for her to being fine with the gentle yeah, caress no, of her exactly, cheek exactly. from the guy who's trying to Women murder am her. I right? and <laughs> well, to be fair though, I mean this character is so stupid. You could talk her to join the devil with the "you will, I won't, you will, I won't, you won't" trick. <laughs> devil <laughs> season, rabbit season, <laughs> devil season. <laughs> And they should not use reaction shots of this actress. No. They keep doing that. She doesn't know what the fuck is because she's clearly like, wee, bird flying, or like, <laughs> sand is sandy. Like, that's, you can see what's going through her head. It has nothing to do with it what's happening got on screen. Cuts of her at the craft services table. Hi, we make a movie. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. So, okay. I get so to have as much as I want. They said there's no limit. You can just take it, <laughs> it's free. It's part of the movie. I have a nope. badge. Look at my badge. <laughs> Talent. Now, meanwhile, <laughs> Daniel is still going straight on a motorcycle. Um, yeah. And he pulls off at a gas station. He's not going to get gas at this gas station, by the way, which is good because this character doesn't have any money. But he stops at a gas station anyway, where he comes across Christopher Walken hitting his engine with a hammer. What the fuck is he doing with that car? He's fixing Heath's car the way Heath fixes his car, I assume. Just <laughs> smoke pouring out of it. This will knock it back into my engine go. Did it not work? I think it worked. <laughs> <laughs> Which, I mean, I feel like at this point, Christopher Walken was just like so disappointed with this script. He was just hitting shit with a hammer. And they're like, we're going to have to work it in, guys. We're going to have to make it like that was intentional. I'm not uh, stopping. <laughs> <laughs> he does do the classic Chris Walken tongue move thing in this scene, which mm -hmm. is great. Mm -hmm. Do you think his teeth taste good? I think they taste, I bet his teeth taste good. He does the, the hashtag teeth. taste Christopher Walken's teeth. <laughs> <laughs> also, he tries to do the hair swoosh thing with his yes. wig, but he can't do it. And it's just like, <laughs> it's like watching a Nephilim try to kick in a door. It's amazing. <laughs> This, this entire scene, it's just pure walk in essence. I wrote that in my notes, and it turns out that's a word. According <laughs> no, to spell check. Yeah, no, there's walk no in underline. Essence. Yeah. Huh. Um, so, yeah, so they have this just brutally meaningless conversation, uh, the two of them. And then the Nephilim kid has a weird flashback image of the little girl from the first movie and then drives away. Oh, what a callback. What a scene. So important. <laughs> All right, so now we're 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 back with Zofia and Mags, um, and she's like, and this only lasts for a second, but I have to bring this up because she's like, hey, wait a minute, I've done my time at Sunday school, I've never heard of this imperial guy, and he goes, yeah, Protestants are hellbound. <laughs> yeah, he's yeah. just like, uh, maybe you chose the wrong religion, and they both turn to the camera and slap their faces like, whoa. <laughs> Did you install the update for <laughs> Christianity 2.0? <laughs> you mean Islam? No, no, not no. Islam. No. So, <laughs> all right. So now we're back to Daniel the Nephilim, and he's just following the devil symbols in the rocks, apparently. I don't know. Um, so he pulls over in the middle of a desert. and to the suddenly, Indian village from the first movie. Well, yeah. Okay. So, you know, yeah, you apparently picked up on that. For all the rest of us know, it's just some spot in the desert 
where suddenly a 15-year-old goth chick just shows up out of nowhere talking about how she dreamed of him. <laughs> He's the actress who played Mary. Is it the same Yeah, actress? it is. It is. Yeah, Absolutely. I figured that out on IMDb this girl later. could but... not be less Native American. It's, it's like well, Dan Snyder's daughter with a braid and a feather. <laughs> it's not. That's the best thing, though, is like, because that happens all the time where you have like a child actor who's like, oh, my gosh, you look just like Neville Longbottom. And then they grow up and you're like, oh, oh <laughs> damn, this Pokemon does not look like Charmander. <laughs> you have a face tattoo that says D-A-P-L. That's not going to work. <laughs> Now, I've got to say, though, this was such a weird flashback scene because this chick's like, I've dreamed of you, herbs, crystals, magic. And I'm like, oh, my God, I've sat through this exact <laughs> speech from this exact girl so many times and I never got my dick wet. She goes, you look smaller in person. I don't want to be like, but Eli looks the same. Eli looks like <laughs> Eli looks exactly <laughs> like, like I imagined. Like it. I expected in Just the dream. A totally, exactly. Christopher wow, Walken's hair is a lot longer than I thought it would be. And you're... Yeah, but no, but Eli. And then she says, like, here, I scratched lines into this rock for you. Here's a, here's a paperweight that you, you'll, you'll need on your quest. I did. <laughs> Spoiler, he actually will. Sort well, of, sort of. A yeah, paperweight will be yeah, crucial. A, at the end. Afterthought. Yeah, like they were like, oh, fuck, we have to use the paperweight at the very end of the movie. Yeah, Drop they it. used the Drop shit it. out of that paperweight. But this is the this is supposed to be the moment in the movie, right, where like, you, you always get that in the quest, like where they give him the special arrow that's going to be able to pierce the dragon or the, or the, the one knife that can kill it, whatever. But yeah, it's a fucking paperweight and we never get any context for it. Paperweight of Hyrule. Your link papers will blow away. No. Yeah, good. no, that's not yeah, okay. So now it's time for another Maggie and Zophie scene, because that's by the way all we're doing for the rest of the movie is switching between the three various groups that are driving. Making boring and bored angelic small talk. Like I can't yeah. stress enough how little stakes are in these scenes. She's like, so like do you still love God? And he's like, oh, I honestly, I don't want to talk about our exes. Like, can we just can we just go see the world's biggest ball of string? I don't, I don't want to focus on him right now. So, yeah, so. God's just not that into you. <laughs> Would have been a great subtitle. All right. So now, meanwhile, Walken's at a diner, but not just any diner. He's mad. He's, he's at the Halfway House Cafe. Yes. <laughs> the name of the diner. It's the pilot again. episode for God Awful Restaurants. Yes. Who <laughs> thought this would come back? Right. Yeah. Ma okay. So it's the same waitress and everything from movie one. Uh, that In match. the same outfit with some age makeup on. It's great. Who yeah. thought this was going to come back? <laughs> also, Who was like, what did people like most about our movie? Well, we love that scene between him and the waitress. So, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Also, Walken has enormous glasses now mm -hmm. out of yeah. nowhere. He might as well take them out of a cello case. It's so, <laughs> That's what he keeps his trumpet in, though. So he doesn't have room. Yeah. So it, basically, they directly reenact that that waitress scene from the first movie, um, except for this time, he has to eat food because he's not an angel anymore. So he orders exactly like Eli, except the opposite amounts of healthy, but like the same <laughs> specificity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, and it is, again, the, the best... best Part of the movie is just it is. him ordering breakfast. He's just an interesting actor to watch. <laughs> <laughs> I could he could I could have watched that for another twenty one minutes. <laughs> yeah, would have been. <laughs> and then it just had been credits. I would have been like, yeah, that bat last part no. of the movie was good. <laughs> Syrup. <laughs> so meanwhile, Maggie and Zofia are still driving, um, and now they come across Daniel on his motorcycle. And I just wrote, hey, great job taking the bad guy to your boyfriend. How did you think this was going to work? Um, and then I wrote, we're an hour and three minutes into this movie, and it has yet to establish a plot. Because I still thought at this point one was going to materialize. Right. Uh, something, something about West, right? <laughs> They've been going. <laughs> because what proceeds is the worst version of high schoolers trying to make Mad Max Fury Road versus a <laughs> car chase <laughs> by sense of smell. Yeah, well, the problem with all the car chases is that they don't take place in dust storms so you can see what's happening all the time, and that fucks up your imagination. I think that's just a general problem. Movies aren't putting enough scenes in sandstorms. <laughs> like sandstorm meet cute, sandstorm shopping spree, sex scene. <laughs> well, this could have been. We don't know that this wasn't a shopping spree. I mean, come on. It was a fucking sand. So, yes, for three minutes, we just watched sand. 
You know, and then you can occasionally see that there's a tire moving through it. And I wrote in my notes here, like, the thing that's good about listening to this show that's not good about doing this show is that you at home right now, you're just listening to us talk, but you didn't have to watch the car chase. Like, we're just like, and then there's a car chase. And I really wish... I could listen to a podcast about these movies and then do a podcast about the podcast. I hope that's not too meta, but you know what I'm saying? I don't want to watch these movies anymore. <laughs> Holy shit. And okay, so now the angel Zo Zofia wants her to run over her boyfriend and she won't do it, but she, she does seem tempted for a second. And I feel like Lucinda would have that moment. I know Anna would have that moment. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I wrote in my notes here. This is just like me and Anna driving. Just like, hit him. No, no. Come on. No. <laughs> I love it. Too. She goes, she turns to him at one point and he, he's like, you've got to run him down. Uh, the world will end or something. I don't really know what's going on. And she says, whoever you are, whatever you are, I'm not afraid of you because fear is an emotion and I don't do those. <laughs> this movie. <laughs> Jesus. So when it becomes clear that she's not going to help, Zofie reaches over and pulls the wheel all the way over into the barrel roll position. <laughs> and and movie, into a barrel. He flips the car. Why? But, Who knows? But, Wouldn't the motorcycle how? just drive away? Yeah, look, It's a car yes. chase. It's not like the motorcycle also stops. Shouldn't he just be like, meow? And he's like, oh, now I don't have a car. Well, fuck, I don't want to get too far ahead of him. Yeah, but also, not just why, but how? Is there a function on most trucks that allow you to go into a spontaneous barrel roll with no ramp? Did he hit the turbo jump button at the same time? The NOS. Anyway. <laughs> So, yeah, but da but Daniel is on the motorcycle and he does stop because the car, the truck that was just chasing him uh, is... Correct. I feel like he was like, oh, I forgot the plot too. What are we doing? <laughs> I, was I chasing him? It's like memento, except accidentally. And also, I mean, this is his girlfriend's truck, right? Like you would think that he would have recognized it before he drove into the sandstorm. He would have been like, oh shit, Mags, what's up? You're going to the desert? I'm going to go drop a rock on uh, Aragorn. <laughs> you want to come? <laughs> So, but instead, he somehow realizes that what must be happening is that there's an angel that's kidnapped his girlfriend that's making her chase him. So he kicks the exhaust pipe off the bike and then goes to whoop Zofie's ass with it. Yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> Zofie else perched on top of the truck all of a sudden. Mm. For, not, it's not as effective as it's normal, like, especially when it's like, hold on, we'll start this conversation when I finish awkwardly. Getting onto hold this on. so, perching. <laughs> on this. Hold on, hold on. Okay, there. What were you saying? Let's, are we going to fight? Yeah. Yeah, and they are. And so now Zofie's switchblade Athame is also has a spear option. A staff <laughs> and like a, a yanker thing? Like it, well, it, we'll get it, to it the opens. yanker, but <laughs> yes, there's also a yanker. <laughs> it's supposed to be like the Darth Maul double saber yeah. thing. Mm. But it's just a bigger it's just handle like that. now. It's just, it's just like that, It just has That's a bigger exactly handle. what this is like, this point of the, the movie. The internal, it's just like that. <laughs> <laughs> the internal physics of this fucking knife fascinate me. But yeah, so now it's time for a big fight with these two again. And of course, they went to the little kids school of fighting where, you know, anytime you spin, that's a really awesome move. Jesus. Are those not? <laughs> You know, they add power when you spin. I feel like That's they how do. we fought over the penguin pants. You give me 16 <laughs> fucking minutes, I could choreograph a better fight scene between Eli and my cat. So eventually... Look at my butthole, spinning butthole. <laughs> <laughs> mow, mow, mow. So we'll, we'll make a Patreon goal out of it. So, okay. So he stovepipes, he, he beats Zofi and then stovepipes his head in with the, with the exhaust pipe. And then he goes to check on Maggie. But he forgot to rip Sophie's heart out. I don't understand. If you get stabbed through the heart, it's fine. It, as long as you leave it there. Yeah, right. It's, it's like the... a Bluetooth situation <laughs> with the heart. How you far have to, like, can the heart be from you before your angel does? Like, it was like, ah, eh, Right, if you hold is. your heart against your own chest. Or you, and, and also, he hands him the heart later. Can you put it back? Right? Yeah. So, I, I mean, anyway. But yeah, so he... so. Daniel goes to walk over to Maggie and suddenly Sophie's spear like sticks out of his chest from behind and it's like, oh no. And this is where the little hook thingy engages. Right. This is the heart puller mechanism. 
of the knife. But before he can use it to pull Daniel's knife out, the chick shoots him, which this time affects him, right? Like the angels in this movie are so randomly haphazardly bulletproof. Yeah. Makes me right. long for the first movie, the sanity and normalized <laughs> physics of the first movie. Yeah. So, so Daniel pulls the spear like out through the front of his chest and then goes to pull out Zofie's heart. Why? Just press the button. The hooks go back down. And you can pull oh, yeah. So, but like... he can't reach the button because it's behind him. It's, it's behind him. He's trying to Watch get it. Him. He's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> He's trying to turn around. The fucking spear hits the truck. Ow! Ow! Ow. <laughs> He's like pushing it against the back, backing into it. <laughs> All right, I got a moonwalk now. Oh. So much sugar is going to be required. <laughs> All right, press it. No, you pressed it twice. Now it's back out. I started to. <laughs> now it's. All right, hold on. Maggie, Three I know you're dying, presses. but can you Wait, get how many presses total? This always happens when we're getting in the car. You, you go this too early, and then it stays locked. <laughs> <laughs> so also by the way now christopher walken is there apparently he showed up at some point but before we get to him we have to have the part where daniel pulls zophiel's heart out of his chest yep. and the clever dialogue that goes with it yeah, he hands him his heart and he goes this is what it feels like to be human and i wrote a, a, a heart in your in hand what way is what it what? He might as well be like, ice to meet you. I mean, there's no reason. <laughs> like, I know it's just like. Starts to hand him the heart, does the like, the the hair swipe instead. Oh. <laughs> Burn. Feel that? Human. So, so he goes back over to Megan. She's dying. Uh, or she dies, and he and he turns to Christopher Walken, and he goes, bring her back. And he's like, well, I can't do that anymore. That was just in the first two movies, but you weren't alive in those. Why would you just assume <laughs> that I can bring people back from the dead? That's weird. That's but weird. I, but I'll hold her hand while she dies, and you could just... This actress is smiling like her friend is sitting next to the camera taking pictures. <laughs> She's like, I'm in a movie with Christopher Walken! <laughs> This is our big emotional scene where me and Christopher Walken both did the same amount of acting. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so he kisses her and wanders off into the desert to finish the movie up, whatever the hell. Because like Christopher Walken's like the important thing isn't whether she's going to die or not. It's whether that you get the thing that the movie is about done because otherwise, oh, bad stuff or something. So, and but then we have to linger here for like eleven minutes while her and they really seem to think her acting was gonna was gonna carry Act Three here. While her and Christopher Walken have the whole "I'm dying, um, you sure I don't want to die" thing. <laughs> yeah, Christopher Walken is basically rolling his eyes at this actress. She's like, <laughs> Christopher Walken, nope, Gabriel, Gabriel, I <laughs> have always wanted. And he's just like, oh wow, I'm gonna eat while you. Act. <laughs> that's what you want to call it. <laughs> because I don't want to die. It's like, given your acting chops, I'm not really sure why. Um, so, okay. So now we have to wrap this up, apparently. I, we have 11 minutes left. There's bound to be a plot in here somewhere. So, is this it? I think this is the plot. <laughs> this is it. Yeah, I guess. Um, he yeah, walks it ends the, here. So, the deserts of Native America. <laughs> he, well, yeah, he Where walks he, over. He walks over to the night part of the desert. Yes, yes, exactly. He walks, the day part, <laughs> to the night part of the desert, and, and he that. finds he's gonna the walk angel. back to the day part too later. And he finds the <laughs> angel skeleton, which was Satan in the old movie, but is now Puriel. No, it was just it was just an angel that had died in the battle in the old one. But yes, yeah, it's, it's the angelic archaeopteryx that they've been using through all of these. And, and 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 no, it's not pure. It's nothing. It makes no fucking sense. Why is there an angel dead in the desert here? Um, and then suddenly a very unrealistic fire appears around them. Oh, I, honestly, could have been just like three guys in black outfits holding paper cutouts of fire, just like crackle, <laughs> crackle in a circle, crackle. And I feel like it's not effective either. It's it's supposed to be like a big symbol of one of the, the angel of Puriel, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like they're they're both like standing though right inside of it. Like, hey man, why all the fire? Oh, it's my symbol. Shit. Yeah, you, you have can't. to you have to look you up have to, from like, above. Let's walk up to that hill before we start <laughs> fighting. It's, like, it's a pretty cool fire symbol. 
I wanted it to cut over to Periel giving like Ben Affleck as Daredevil 30 bucks. Like, thank you so much, man. This has been a nightmare to set up on my own. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> I'm going to be Batman. <laughs> <laughs> and strangely, not the worst thing about that movie. Um, yeah. Okay. So now Periel shows up. And again, I, I've already identified this as the least intimidating human but I, the guy looks like he should be reading slam poetry written from the perspective of lab rats. <laughs> <laughs> this guy looks like I'm putting up with him because he gets good shrooms. Yeah, he looks like he's about to describe to you like the true powers of a river and then like <laughs> wade in with all his clothes on and get pneumonia and die. Like this is yeah. not, this is, I would, if I appeared in this movie, I'd be like, oh yeah, no, I can fight that guy. You want me to fight that guy? I'm not very good at fighting, but I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Pretty sure I was I a little nervous when you said fight scene, but no, I'm that's, that that'll be I'll be fine. I should like yeah, the guy I'll couldn't pull kick his in a door. Long hair. <laughs> so, yeah, exactly, exactly. So, and also just as an admission to how little plot this movie has, there are eight minutes left in this movie at this point. Daniel turns to the main bad guy who we are just now meeting and haven't really established as a character in any way, and says to him, and I quote, "What am I doing here?" <laughs> it's like my question exactly, bro. You had a fucking hour and 20 minutes to answer that question. You don't get to ask it now. And they have no answer. No, Periel's like, I'm going to kill the earth. And he's like, wait, why? Who are you? And he's like, come on, man. It's just, just doesn't, fight. Come on. You know that that's not written <laughs> anywhere. Just fight me. Fight now. Also, okay. So they've set this. This is the main battle, right? This is the thing is the it? whole move. I, I mean, it's the last battle. So I thought fighting Zor Zor Zorro was the last battle, but now <laughs> it's like it's like when you kill someone at the end of an action game, and he's like, ur, 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 you're all like, oh fuck, I thought you were done. I got to do a bonus boss. Yeah, right, <laughs> right. Yeah, this is the bonus boss portion, and here's basically the fight. He jumps super slow motion over top of of Daniel. Periel does. He Daniel now has Zofi's spear. So he spears Periel with it while he's in the air, and then Periel tries to crunch his eyes out, and he doesn't. He doesn't. That's it. Uh, but then when he yep. kills him... Oh, well, not yeah, not quite. <laughs> yeah, he does like a karate block, like a meh. Like, you, you, you ever seen like a guy at a bar who's like, let me show you how to break a wrist light, and he's like, meh, meh. <laughs> and then he does a bicycle kick up of up Periel. Yeah, walks up him and flips <laughs> off of him. And then he uses Herbosa's Fury. And then God lightnings him. What? <laughs> I feel like God was up there about to do the lightning bolt. Like, fuck, man, just do, like take a normal step back. What, you, you don't, don't have walk to do a flip? fucking backflip. You don't know the wall run? The wall, really? One step back. <laughs> well, and also, okay, so this bad guy gets struck by lightning. Like the, the the main bad guy just could have just died at a heart. Why would why does anyone have to be there? You know what ruins everything? God. Everything right, that yes. ever happens in a movie? <laughs> exactly. God. So yeah, so now of course Daniel uses the heart pull feature of the spear, and that person slash thing is dead slash stopped. Um so now Puriel is on the huge pile of zombie fuck corpses. But he's sad something. about it because they're gonna get cum in his hair. Oh, no, I get it. Okay, I get that. I totally get that. And this, apparently, the combination lightning bolt, heart pull, naked pile of people grabbing at you reduces him to a skeleton in a matter of seconds, which is sitting on top of the angel skeleton Archaeopteryx thing that he found earlier. That all ties together, not really. And this is where he pulls out the, the paperweight. Remember the paperweight? From like and he 10 just minutes ago. It. He's just like, and done. Well, he drops it, but he crushes the skull of the angel that's already been defeated with it. Full circle of six minutes of movie. What? There it the, is. But, and apparently this is what this movie was about. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, okay, here's how easy this rewrite is to, to, to at least make this scene worthwhile. The whole oh, goddamn... Okay, the whole goddamn movie is obviously they're setting up the redemption of Christopher Walken's character, right? At the end of the second one, he gets turned into human. And this one, he needs to redeem himself and become an angel once more. And we watch through the whole movie as Zophiel and is, is fucking with him for being a human and he's weak and everything like that. 
in the at the end of this movie, after you have Daniel fight Zofield, they already have a battle, right? Daniel already has a final battle. Then you have Walken do something that redeems himself in the eyes of God. God gives him back all his arch, archangel powers, and then Gabriel goes and fights Periel. Right? Like, if, if, if the last fucking scene is Periel standing there expecting Daniel to show up, but Christopher Walken shows up, but now he's got the slicked back hair and shit, and he's looking all angelic and whips some ass, that actually would have been a, like, you would have got to that point and you've been like, okay, that was cool. The rest of the movie sucked. Okay. But at least that was a cool way to end it. That would have been amazing, <laughs> except it does involve a Christopher Walken fight scene. Well, they, they've done, that, they've that done, was probably written, and Walken was just like, all right, but this time I use... Capoeira. <laughs> <laughs> I brought my own drummer. Thum, th th thum. Go ahead, Tony. Thum, th th thum. Yeah. Again, Bring it, Perio, that you bitch. Are you, are you trying to tell me that wouldn't have been a better ending? Fucking Christopher Walken doing Capoeira in this scene? Cotwheel. Cotwheel. But like the whole fucking movie is set up for you to eventually like... Bon on the way. Bon on the way. Bon on the way. But the whole movie is so clearly set up for you to eventually be like, ah, there's the Christopher Walken from the first, and that never happens. Instead, they wrap it up with this bullshit after the fight scene where Daniel walks back to the day portion of the desert uh, to where Maggie is. And we see that Walken has his angel tattoo back because apparently holding her hand while she died is all he needed to do. You know, God wasn't so super picky about that. Yeah. And he brings Maggie back to life and then explodes into light pigeons. Uh, fun fact, Christopher Walken <laughs> actually can do that. Not part of the movie. Just, uh, how he exited. <laughs> I really wanted a laser vulture to just like kill all the Gabriel birds. <laughs> sure. we, over there. Ah, fuck. This is, I'm, I'm missing pieces. Shit. <laughs> Holy shit, was this bad enough to deserve us? I, I was like, after this movie ended, I'm watching the credits wondering if there are going to be plots, a plot there or something. <laughs> like, they, they hit it. It's going to be in between like two gaffers or something. Oh, by the way, the plot was. All right. So we're done with the trilogy. We're not doing four and five, or maybe we will some day in the future. We're not doing that right now. So this is the end of the prophecy, and we're going to do it. If I'm following this correctly, I, I wrote these down. Tell me if I missed anything. These are the angelic powers that we've seen in this trilogy so far. Okay. You've got super strength, super smell, napkin currency, hand roofies, extreme window jumping action, oral identification, name knowing, soft landing, selective invincibility, eye licking memory swap, temporally specific zombie manufacture, spontaneous other person combustion, involuntary mom munging, noodle legged door kicks, and obviously super perching. Did I miss anything? Vista print. Vista print. Well, that was, I, that was under <laughs> that my was napkin, napkin currency. Money, yeah. Like I was, yeah. yeah, exactly. It's all together, but yeah. Pay attention. <laughs> all right. That was different. That was so, a different power. It was, it was a card in a wallet. It wasn't a napkin. It was, it was making the thing. Yeah. So, okay. So to wrap it all up, I'm going to give you your pick of any two angel powers from this movie. Which two do you pick? And what do you then take as your superhero name? Oh, uh, okay. I'm going to go hair tasting. And blood tasting. I don't think you mentioned blood tasting, or did you? I, I mentioned oral identification. Oral identification. Okay, sort of so I'm going to go hair get both of those together. Going hair tasting and blood tasting, and I'm uh, rape kitty pride. <laughs> oh, Not offense. I'm catching rapists. I'm catching. Oh, them. I see. I'm anti rapist. <laughs> Everybody like okay. me again. I was about to say, hey man, <laughs> that All got right. dark fast. <laughs> All right, here's my Heath impersonation while I give a different answer. <laughs> My answer is uh, eyeball licking. <laughs> <laughs> I call myself heat. Okay, I'm going to go with perching, obviously, and sniffing other people with my powers, mm -hmm. and I call myself the heat hunter. Uh-oh. I avenge myself <laughs> on pants thieves. <laughs> I perch over them. And I always know where they are. <laughs> And well, he's going to be squatting over me when I wake up one of these days. <laughs> Not like normal. No, he's going to be squatting over you before you wake up one of these days. That's how this is going to end. All right, well, that's going to do it for our review of the Prophecy Trilogy. That's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to taunt your titties for next week. So, Eli, tell us what's on deck. Well, we're coming back to New York City for a live show, and that means we got to do one of the big requests we've gotten, the cross 
and the Switchblade. Oh, shit. The cinematic <laughs> debut of Eric Estrada. Was this highly requested? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, We've yeah. been getting requests from this for this since before we started doing the show. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to this one. And, of course, tickets are still available if you're going to be in the New York City area. And that show is, of course, on June the 10th. 10th. Thank you, Eli. And we still have tickets available for our Platinum Night the night before if you want to watch the movie along with us. So with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 94 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per-episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help us a ton by leaving us a five-star review on iTunes and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist and The Skeptocrat, available on iTunes, Stitcher, and wherever else podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slotnick of Evil Giraffes on Mars. All other music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm No Illusions, promising to work hard during another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club close. Pile of fuck zombies got a pretty nice contract from Brazzers, despite ruining that casting couch. Brazzers, please sponsor us. Heath, Noah, and Eli made it through three Christopher Walken movies without a cowbell joke. Huh? Prophecy 4 and 5 were about Madge's trip to the grocery store. Well, 5 was about her coming back. Right, exactly. She runs it to the coroner. She's like, oh my gosh, how are you? And he's like, ah, angel. <laughs> You know that moment where you realize that that fart you thought was going to be silent probably won't be? Yeah. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2017. All rights reserved.